Hello, everybody. Uh, it's that time again to discuss the latest episode of One Division. I'm sorry for not streaming this yet again, but uh, I have my reasons. So let's just uh, get right into it. Um, first thing I want to bring up is uh, something that I forgot to mention last week. So, or rather, yeah, last week. Um, so when discussing episode seven. Um, I brought up the whole, you know, Nexus in Universe ad that, 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 that played during that episode and how it's a reference to how Wanda is a Nexus being and it, how it's also possibly a reference to um, Nexus of All Realities or whatever it's called. Anyway, um, aside from... Okay, so, so, yeah, basically they're saying that Wanda is a Nexus being and... What I neglected to mention is that Nexus beings are so powerful that they have to be monitored by multi-universal guardians, basically. Organizations like the Time Variance Authority. Now, the Time Variance Authority uh, is actually going to be a part of uh, the Loki Disney Plus series. So, this super secret cameo that the actors who are playing the characters on WandaVision are talking about... It could very well actually be Loki, and uh, that's something that I haven't seen a lot of people mention, actually, so. I don't know. It, it seems, when, when you take that into consideration now, it seems that Loki might actually appear in the last episode of, of, of WandaVision, because he might actually be the super secret cameo that, that people are hinting at. And it's also possible that the Time Variance Authority itself could show up in the ending of WandaVision as well. Um, but yeah, that's the, the thing that uh, I, I forgot to mention uh, last week. Um, so with that out of the way, let's uh, let's get into talking about um, Episode 8. And uh, this, uh, this whole thing probably isn't going to be as long as uh, previous discussions because... Um, this episode was a whole lot of revealing, you know, everything up to this point, like, like pretty much explaining basically everything, you know, like, there's still some things that are left unsolved and whatnot, but this episode was far more about answering questions than uh, posing new ones. So, the episode begins with a flashback of Agatha centuries ago during the Salem Witch Trials, um, I think I mentioned this before, you know, when, when I mentioned that Agatha Harkness is a witch in a literal sense, as in, you know, your, your stereotypical Salem witch trials witch. Yeah, so we, we see the beginning of this episode um, during the Salem witch trials, and uh, she's about to be burned at the stake, but not by witch hunters or villagers, but rather the coven of witches that she belongs to because apparently she broke their code by using dark magic or something, you know, and, uh, that's going to be important later on, because it basically tells us, um, what kind of magic uh, Agatha uses, um, and, uh, we basically actually see her using that magic, um, because th the way that the witches, uh, attempt to burn her at the stake is not in the traditional way, but as shooting some kind of magic at her, and, uh, well, I guess she was supposed to, like, blow up or burn or something, but, uh, instead what ends up happening is, uh, th this is blue magic that the witches are shooting at her, and, uh, this blue magic ends up turning purple, and, uh, Agatha doesn't die or anything like that, and instead, um, she appears to be draining the life out of the witches that are shooting this magic at her, and, um, She's able to uh, break free from her binds, and, um, you know, she's trying to convince them that, that she can be good and, and, you know, begging them to, to spare her and whatnot, but the witches, which includes her mother, don't believe that, that, that she can be good and, and that she must die, you know, so, you know, with only her mother left, she tries to kill her, but the same thing happens to her. She gets the life energy drained out of her, you know, so... Remember what I uh, said about, uh, I think it was episode 6, where this ad was? Uh, one of the in-universe ads showed a starving kid, you know, uh, said he'd be, he, he'd be so hungry he, he, he'd do anything for food, and, and then a shark offers him yo magic yogurt, 
And uh, I basically came up with the idea that, excuse me, this shark represented the villain of the show, and he's feeding off of, excuse me, the magic of Wanda to survive because they, they survive off of feeding off of the magic of others. So, yeah, I, I think I actually got my assessment of that commercial rights because this she this scene is showing us um that Agatha uh, is basically has been alive for hundreds of years because she's able to survive off of the magic energy uh, of other magic beings <laughs> so um that's uh, one part of the, the puzzle solved um also this might uh, be um uh, I'm not really sure what it means, but when Agatha's mom, you know, tr tries to kill Agatha, a crown-shaped thing forms around her head. You know, I, I'm not really sure what that's about, but it might be something important to note for later. But anyway, um, after this flashback, we we see Agatha and Wanda in, inside of Agatha's basement again. Um, and uh, actually, uh, I'm going to make a quick note here because there's actually something that uh, I forgot to write down in my notes. Um, okay, so uh, like I said, um, back in Agatha's basement, um, we see Wanda try to read Agatha's mind, which she cannot do. Um, and if you recall, um, in the previous episode, Billy, or, or, or was it Tommy? I'm, I'm not really sure. Wh whichever one of the kids is Wiccan, um, he, he basically said that he liked it in Agatha's house because it's quiet, and Agatha herself is quiet on the inside, so that, you know, pretty much, you know... <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that, that was meant to say that, um... You know, if Agatha is like, I forgot where I was going with this. Anyway, the point is, you know, the reason why she was quiet on the inside is because, um, not, not, not because she's empty headed or whatever, but rather because she can prevent people from reading her mind or, or whatever, you know, and, uh, speaking of which, um, she's actually well versed in magic and I mean she ought to be right she's been alive for over a hundred years so you would think that she has studied many different kinds of magic and is very familiar with magic itself you know what I mean so um, so oh boy Quicksilver is confirmed to be not the MCU Quicksilver or even the, the Quicksilver from the Foxman universe um, Agatha basically confirms herself that, that he was, um, her own creation. Um, she, she said that, that she created him from a crystalline something, you know, basically, you know, doing whatever she could to, to make it look as, as much like Pietro as she could, um, because she couldn't use actual necromancy to bring him back, seeing as how her brother's corpse is in another country, um, so she, she basically just created, you know, a fake Pietro, or Fietro as she calls him, um, and uh, Wanda basically just went along with it, you know? And uh, so, to demonstrate um, how well versed in magic uh, Agatha is, you know, she shows off the runes, uh, that are inside of her basement, um, runes that prevent magic from being used by anyone other than the person who casts the spell. She shows off a mind control spell as well as the ability to transmutate. And all of this is leading up to uh, trying to figure out, you know, where Wanda got her powers from, how she learned to use magic and such. Um, I, I thought, you know, initially that Agatha showing off her mind control spell was going to lead to a reveal that Agatha did in fact mind control Wanda into, you know, doing all the things that led up to Wanda's universe being created. But uh, that's that's not the case. Um, uh, so, he, okay, so yeah, here we go. 
uh, how everything got started is revealed in this episode. Like I said, um, it's all about revealing how everything got started. Um, so in order to actually properly do this, they go all the way back into Wanda's past, uh, basically giving Wanda her MCU backstory, finally. Um, starting off by showing events that were uh, described in Age of Ultron, seeing things that um, we heard about but, but never actually saw. Um, not immediately. Um, first, uh, we, we see Wanda's parents, and I'm sad to say that um, Wanda's father is not Magneto. He's not even played by the same actor who played Magneto in the X-Men movies. Uh, so that confirms that uh, the MCU version of Wanda is not based off of... Um, uh, Wanda's original, um, basically, it's not the Wanda and Quicksilver that are, you know, the son and daughter of Magneto, like they originally were. You know, it's this whole complicated thing about the comics, how they used to be Magneto's kids, but now they're not anymore, so they're, they're basically not based on the version where they are Magneto's kids, but, uh, anyway, um, so... The scene starts um, with uh, Wanda's father returning home, and he's got like a briefcase of old TV shows, you know, videotapes of shows like I Love Lucy and stuff like that, you know, shows that um, that that the sitcom part of WandaVision have been based off of so far, including Malcolm in the Middle, which is kind of surprising because, you know, I would think that that would be a little bit too recent for that to be an influence of Wanda's, but, um, you know, anyway, um, so what this confirms is that, um, the reason why, you know, the whole sitcom thing, you know, Wanda's perfect life or whatever is based off of sitcoms are because these are the shows that she grew up as a kid, you know, love watching and, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, there's, there's a war going on. Uh, in, in Wanda's country at, at the time that this is happening. And uh, uh, as she described in Age of Ultron, her, her family's house actually got bombed um, while this is all happening. And um, we see the exact situation that was described in Age of Ultron playing out. You know, <clears throat> she and her brother are hiding underneath a bed and there's a bomb in front of them and uh, it doesn't go off. And... It, it just blinks, and, uh, you know, they, they're thinking to themselves at any moment that it could explode and kill them, but for two days, it, it doesn't go off. And um, now, originally, this it was considered to be a miracle that they had, you know, survived, because, you know, how could, you know, a bomb be there, you know, not go off, and still not go off after two days? You know what I mean? So, um... Now we learn that the reason why the bomb didn't go off is because Wanda manipulated probability. Agatha says that uh, Wanda used the probability hex, or hex probability as it's called in the comics. Uh, so that, that's another thing, you know. I was wondering this entire time what the significance behind the frequent use of the hexagon shape was in WandaVision. Now I realize that's what it's a reference to. Uh, Hex, uh, magic, hex probability, whatever it's called. So, yeah. So that answers that. Then we see a flashback of Wanda volunteering for Hydra experiments, you know, because of the events that happened when she and her brother were ch children. Um, <clears throat> and, um, we see the experiments that Hydra conducted on her with the Mind Stone, which was Loki's scepter at the time. And, um... This confirms that, um, well, actually, um, because of the whole thing with uh, Wanda manipulating probability and, um, you know, the fact that she was able to do that, you know, that actually confirms that she's always had her powers, but her encounter with the Mind Stone, because of the experiments with Hydra, that actually awakened her powers, you know, the greater powers that she had within her, and, um... So yeah, like like we even see a silhouette of uh, Wanda in her Scarlet Witch form uh, approach her, 
from the Mind Stone during the scene where this happens. And um, when Hydra tries to review the footage of what happened, uh, the footage cuts to the aftermath of, you know, her encounter with the Mind Stone, not showing what fully happened. Like, you know, during the, the whole scene, you know, we see Wanda approach uh, Loki's scepter before she can even get close to it. Uh, the gem part of it uh, breaks free and, and comes to her and then it, it breaks apart, exposing the mind gem inside. And then we see the silhouette of the Scarlet Witch approach Wanda and um, she basically passes out. And, um, excuse me, the footage only shows um, after Wanda had already passed out. It doesn't show anything else in between from Wanda approaching um, the, the the Mind Stone to, um, you know, what happens after, you know, so. That's that's very interesting, and, and, and also, uh, it, it doesn't really explain um, the, the, the whole cutaways when, um, because, you know, Wanda has control over the broadcast in her, her universe and whatnot, so, um, it might not be Wanda herself necessarily, but the Scarlet Witch. Like, they might be separate entities or whatever. Uh, it's, it's a little bit hard for me to explain, but uh, I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it better uh, once I get further along. So, uh, next we see a, a flashback of Vision trying to confront Wanda after she had uh, just joined the Avengers, which was immediately after her brother died. And... Uh, this uh, flashback is basically showing the beginning of uh, her relationship with Vision and uh, basically showing that um, when Vision uh, started to uh, show feelings for Wanda in Civil War, that it wasn't out of the blue, but the two had actually spent some time together before and, and thus, you know... Yeah, God, I'm terrible at explaining things. Um, so, this is actually something that I, I thought about when I was reviewing the scene for this discussion. Um, this isn't a plot-related theory or anything like that, but I'm actually uh, starting to think that the reason why Vision developed an attraction to Wanda in the first place is because uh, Vision was created from the Mind Stone, at least in part anyway, and Wanda's powers were awakened by the Mind Stone. So, I'm thinking that Maybe the Mind Stone is attracted to its own power? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's some kind of self-attraction thing that, that, that's going on there. <laughs> oh. but, but, but yeah, uh, the last flashback we, we see in this episode um, is of Wanda going to S.W.O.R.D. headquarters to get Vision's body back, and it's in this flashback that we learn that Hayward lied about what happened there. Um, he manipulated the security footage that he showed um, to make it look like that Wanda stormed into the place and took Vision's body by force, when what really happened was Wanda wanted to give Vision a, a proper funeral, so she asked for Vision's body to bury him, and, um, uh, in instead, she was shown that Vision's body was being dismantled and that, and was being told that, that she couldn't have him, you know. He, Hayward more or less indirectly asked Wanda, you know, to bring him back to life, but, uh, since, uh, Wanda is not fully aware of her awakened powers yet, she doesn't think that she's capable of doing that, and thus, you know, that's why... She wanted to bury him, not bring him back to life. You know what I mean? So, um, after being told that she can't have Vision's body, um, she basically drives to a house in Westview that's not built, and um, through all of the grief that was built up over the years, you know, losing her parents, losing her brother, and now losing Vision, you know, all of this pent-up emotion, all of this grief and trauma that, that, that's been built up over the years, it finally manifests itself into a new reality that she creates out of her pure emotion, uh, 
basically transforming the town of West New, New Jersey into basically I Wanda's ideal life, you know. So that's more or less how this all started. Uh, and uh, we also know that uh, Wanda also recreated Vision at the same time as well. So the Vision that we've been seeing on the show all along was created by Wanda herself. She did not take Vision's corpse and bring it back to life. She just recreated Vision entirely. So no involvement with Mephisto or Nightmare or anyone else. It was all Wanda all along. Like, wow. <laughs> this episode really threw us for a loop, or at least threw me for a loop, like, because I was not expecting this at all. Like, like, this was, oh boy. And then at the end of all of this, once uh, Agatha ha ha has learned all of this, you know, because they're, they're going through these uh, flashbacks in person and whatnot, um, after all of these flashbacks are shown, um, Agatha and Wanda are back out on the streets and Agatha's got Wanda's kids hostage. And with everything Agatha's learned about Wanda, she was able to figure out that Wanda has been using chaos magic all along and that she is the Scarlet Witch. <laughs> Excuse me. And it, it's such a great moment as well. You know, they finally use the comic book name for uh, Wanda in in the MCU, and it's, it's such a great moment. It, it, <laughs> oh, man. it there was actually no better way for them to end the episode than that. That was, oh, that was so good to finally hear that name used in the MCU. Oh, man. So uh, one last thing um, for we. Uh, um, Get, get into uh, explaining things. Um, in the mid credit scene, we say we see Hayward uh, uh, with Vision's reconstructed body. And um, in, a, in an earlier episode, um, if you remember, I think it was episode five, I think it was, where um, Monica tried to uh, make contact with Wanda by sending a drone in that was... Uh, basically didn't require that it needed to change form in order to get inside and uh, of course Wanda ended up you know throwing it back outside the hex and um, they're using that to you know power up Vision's body again you know since that's more or less you know Wanda's powers, you know, were awakened by the Mind Stone and stuff, so they're basically getting, you know, some power directly from the source, so to speak, you know, to power up Vision's body again, and we can see that it's the white Vision from the comics, from that, that storyline in the comics where Vision was brought back to life, but not really as Vision, it was, he was more or less just, you know, a, a robot with, with none of Vision's personality and had an all-white appearance and, you know, that's why, you know, so, oh man, yo, I was not expecting that, so I, I knew that, that, you know, because last time, you know, when they revealed, you know, Project Cataract and, and how that's what Haywood, Haywood was trying to do with, with Vision, you know, I was not expecting that, that that's what Project Cataract ended up being because there, there was never anything called Cataract in Marvel Comics before. At least, not that I'm aware of. So, the fact that they used that name to um, foreshadow uh, uh, you know, the, the real Vision, who, who's... I guess he's not the real Vision anymore since... It, it, it's a, a false re revival. I'm not really sure how, how to describe all of this, but, but basically, you know, they, they foreshadowed, you know, White Vision being introduced into the MCU in a way that people would not be able to guess that, that that's what they're going to do with, with Vision by using a name that had never been used before in, in Marvel Comics. You know, that that's, that's just genius-level writing. Like... <laughs> Oh, man. Like, like, you know for a fact that there's 100% going to be a fight between Wanda's vision and the real vision. But, like, let's just call it Hayward's vision. Uh, 
seeing as how, he, you know, he can't possibly be a, a proper revival of Vision. Like, like you're going to see some clear differences between, you know, Vision as he was before and Vision as he has now. You know, I mean, just, you know, the way Wanda recreated Vision is, is a clear demonstration of, of that alone. Like, like, her Vision is very clearly, you know, more like the original than how Haywood's Vision is going to be, you know, so... Yeah, I, I'm super looking for, forward to uh, seeing that, and, and, and as, as well as, you know, how the series ends, you know, in, in general. Um, I'm not really sure of, of this, but apparently there's going to be two more episodes instead of, you know, the episode this week being the last one. You know, because apparently when, when Disney announced, you know, that, that the eighth episode was live, that, um, that there are two episodes left, but... That could mean, you know, that they're including episode 8 when they say two episodes left. Or they could mean that there are two episodes after episode 8. So, I don't know. Um, I feel like with, with, with how things are playing out right now, that they couldn't wrap up everything in just one episode. So, if there are going to be 10 episodes in this series rather than 9, then I wouldn't be surprised. Uh... But at the same time, maybe they could wrap the whole thing up in one episode. I'm not entirely sure. Excuse me. I, I think uh, if there are two episodes left, then probably they're going to wrap up the main story um, in the next episode. And then um, episode 10 will be an epilogue of sorts, you know, showing... Uh, resolving the things that um, are not related to the main plot, but basically, you know, answering, tying up loose ends, basically, you know, dealing with things that, um, that you know, like, like dealing with the side characters, basically, and, and basically setting up, you know, what's going on with them, and, you know, just completely wrapping up the story in its entirety, as opposed to just concluding the main plot, you know, so... Uh, the way I think things are going to play out is, um, okay, so, like I said, th this episode threw us completely for a loop. Like, my expectations were shattered w w with the way things played out in this episode. So, originally, you know, I thought Hayward was just going to be an antagonist, but, you know, more and more with every episode, he turned out to be more of a villain, especially with the way this episode ended. Oof. And, uh, you know, I thought, you know, whoever was behind, you know, this whole Wanda creating her own reality and whatnot was going to be the villain. But it turns out that um, it wasn't anybody. It was just Wanda herself doing it. So, yeah, um, the fact that it was just Wanda and, and not, you know, Agatha or anybody else, you know, uh, the, the way uh, Agatha was talking to Wanda at the end of that episode, um, it seemed to me that... So, so the way I think things are, are playing out is that um, Agatha is actually a hero, or at least an anti-hero, who thinks that Wanda is a villain because um, she's the Scarlet Witch. Um, so, you know, that's why she spent actually the entire series, you know, figuring out, you know, how Wanda was able to do everything, you know, how she became so powerful, um, because again, she's very well versed in magic, and, um, she knew that, um, only a supremely powerful being would be capable of doing things that Wanda has done on the show so far. So, you know, that's why, um, she, she, you know, started to investigate Wanda in the first place, um, and why, um, you know, they went through Wanda's past and, and everything, um, in this episode. So, yeah, um, I don't think Agatha is a villain. Um, I just think that, um, she's going to end up being, you know, I, I got, I got things switched around with, with Agatha and Hayward. It's <laughs> Hayward who's the villain and Agatha who's the antagonist. Uh, um, so, so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, a, a couple of more things, um, 
I'm not sure how they're going to uh, resolve the whole two visions thing. Um, but regardless of whether or not White Vision ends up getting destroyed, I think what will probably happen is that um, the, the two Wanda will fuse the two visions um, together, which will bring back the real vision, get rid of Hayward's vision, and make Wanda's vision the real one all at once. You know, so um, yeah, um, yeah. So the reason why you know Vision was falling apart when he tried to leave the hex is. I initially thought it was because, um, you know, he can't survive without Wanda's magic because it was Wanda's magic that brought him back to life. But now, you know, we know that um, the actual reason is because he was created from Wanda's magic, you know, so he literally can't survive without it, which, you know, might have been the case anyway, but, you know... <sighs> You, you know what I mean, hopefully. <laughs> like I said, I'm terrible at explaining things. Um, so yeah, um, like I said, this episode was way more about answering questions than it was about posing new ones, but um, it still has some questions left unanswered. Um, uh, this isn't an unanswered question, but um, one of the things that I'm wondering is um, because... Okay, so... So we know now that, I mean, it's not, no, no, it has to be this way, because why would Agatha create Wanda's kids? I'm pretty sure, you know, it, it, it's basically confirmed at this point that Wanda's kids are in fact hers and that it wasn't Agatha who created them. Again, we, we were going off of the reveal from the previous episode that, that Agatha was behind everything, um, which <laughs> she actually wasn't. Um, but uh, now that we know that, that that it wasn't actually her, that then it has to be you know that Wanda created her her own kids. Um, but it's because of that that it, it puts you know as I just explained, Vision couldn't leave the hex because the hex was created from Wanda's magic, as was Vision himself. So if that's the case with Billy and Tommy as well, then does that mean that they also cannot leave the Hex, otherwise they'll die? You know, what happens if, you know, WandaVision ends with the Hex disappearing or, or being destroyed, you know? Does that mean that Wanda's kids are, are going to die or vanish as well? I mean, that, that, that has to be what that means, right? I mean... If Wanda's kids end up being real, or they don't fade from existence when the Hex stops existing, or they leave the Hex, you know, like, yeah, it's just this big question about whether or not they're real, you know what I mean? And, um, I'm thinking, you know, trauma is a common theme w with, you know, how all of this came to be in the first place, you know. Wanda lost her parents, then her brother, Vision, and um, I, I feel like if anything is going to truly push her over the edge and make her into a villain, possibly for Doctor Strange into the Multiverse of Madness, you know, if anything is going to, you know, add to the trauma that she's already been through so much of, it's going to be losing her kids, so... I'm thinking the show is probably going to end with them either dying or fading out of existence due to them not being real. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that, that's um, we'll, we'll have to see what happens there. But but I'm I'm sure um, this is not going to uh, be a happy ending uh, for for this series. So uh, yeah, a couple of questions still remain, despite all the ones that uh, this latest episode have have answered. Um, first of all. Um, so, we're shown Agatha's backstory, but, but only in parts. Um, we know that, that her coven tried to burn her at the stake because she was practicing dark magic, but where did Agatha get her powers in the first place? You know, was it just her um, learning magic with the, the witches that she was with? Um, um, and if so, then, then where did um, the whole... Because Agatha claims that... Um, 
she's not actually practicing dark magic, but rather the, the powers come to her naturally or whatever. So, you know, if that's the case, then how did that happen? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Then, um, so, so then the, the other thing is, uh, speaking of, you know, where did they get their powers? How did Wanda get her powers initially? Because we, we know now that she didn't actually get them from the Mind Stone. They were just awakened by the Mind Stone. <laughs> Excuse me. She already had Hex Probability powers uh, as a kid. Um, but, but how did she get them? Because she, she's not a mutant. She wasn't born with them. So, you know, going off of, you know, knowledge from the comics, that means that she, she had to have... Because in the comics, it's Cthon who was the, you know, ancient being that, that it's super powerful and, and is where chaos magic comes from, you know, in the comics, you know, so, so Wanda's powers in the comics basically come from him. So does that mean that Wanda somehow came in contact with Cthon or, or, you know, Cthon approached Wanda when, when she was a child? You know, like, we don't really know where Wanda's powers come from now that we know that they didn't actually come from the, the Infinity Stone. So, you know, that that's, that's a question that, that still has yet to be remained. And also, um, <laughs> I, I know that, that, that this episode was basically explaining Wanda's backstory and, and how the creation of her reality came to be, but, um, um, so there, there wasn't any time to, you know, explain this, but where exactly, how exactly did Agatha get a hold of Darkhold, and, and what purpose does it serve to her? Uh, because, like I said, um, Agatha probably thinks that, um, she's, she's trying to do some good in the world by, by, uh, getting rid of, of this insanely powerful being known as the Scarlet Witch, um, but I have to wonder how, how she would think that she could combat the Scarlet Witch, because if she's as well-versed as magic as she's showing herself to be, then she should also know um, that you can't go up against the Scarlet Witch. It, it's just I impossible. What, like, you know, <laughs> she even describes the amount of power that the Scarlet Witch has and how absurd it is that, that Wanda's using that power to make breakfast for dinner, as she puts it. So, you know, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what Agatha thinks she could do um, with the dark hold, uh, unless, you know, she thinks whatever her knowledge is contained inside will, will help her in, in combating against the Scarlet Witch. But, um, yeah, n not entirely sure what, what purpose it serves other than what I just described, but I mean, like, that that's the only... Yeah, I don't really know, but uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll find out um, in the next episode, or next two episodes, if they are going to be two episodes. So, yeah, it, it's only a matter of time, and it's going to debut at the end of this week, so, um, oh boy, definitely going to be looking forward to that. Oh man, am I looking forward to that. Oh my god. I, I'm so excited to, to, to see where things go from here and, and how this series ends um, regardless of whether or not it's going to be the next episode or two episodes from now you know because we all you know there there being actually 10 episodes instead of nine is definitely sounds like something that, that Disney slash Marvel would, would, would pull so yeah I mean what better way to, to end the series than by surprising people with, with a bonus episode you know what I mean so, um, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 um, I think that's going to be it for, uh, discussing, uh, this week's episode, um, like I said, there, there wasn't as much to talk about because it, this was more about learning things than it was about, you know, giving us things to, to speculate about, but, um, yeah, I definitely enjoyed the hell out of it, and I'm sure I'm going to enjoy the hell out of the next episode, so... Very much looking forward to it. With that being said, I hope everybody enjoyed watching this, and uh, as well as Mondavision itself. Um, you know, I've been having a great time watching the show, as well as making these videos, having these live streams, talking talking about um, 
the show and um you know <laughs> falcon and winter soldier you know starts like two weeks from now so as soon as one division ends assuming there is 10 episodes um we're going to have another show to talk about immediately after so uh they're, they're basically going to give us no time to relax and, and rest um <laughs> like we're, we're still going to be talking about the last episode of wandavision you know what when the falcon and winter soldier starts assuming there's 10 episodes so <laughs> yeah it, it's a very exciting time to be a marvel fan or at least an mcu fan so um yeah we have a lot to look forward to and i hope i i get to continue to enjoy talking about all of this with, with you guys so um yeah thanks for watching um see you guys next week uh for talking about what may or may not be the uh season finale for for wandavision so uh yeah take care everybody uh, i'll see you next time see ya